If I were to ask you the following questions, would you be able to answer them right here, right now? Do you know the current balance of your bank and savings account? <laughs> Do you have an emergency fund in your own name in the case of an unexpected event? And um, about your salary, do you usually have some left at the end of the, each month? <laughs> or perhaps, and more unfortunate, some month left at the end of each salary? <laughs> During my career in finance, I realized that especially women find managing their finances really challenging. Even today, half of the women in the Netherlands are financially dependent on their partner or the government. How is this possible? What societal codes have we agreed upon in the past that bring us to this current state? My name is Lies Oudemans, and I was lucky to grow up with a father who never treated me differently than my two brothers, teaching me that girls can be just as good with numbers as boys. So, every Sunday morning, We'd sit together, the two of us, at the kitchen table, he with a hot cup of coffee and I with my little piggy bank in front of me. It was the best time of the week. I was going to receive my pocket money. <laughs> But more importantly, there were precious moments where we would discuss my expenses and saving goals. I was only seven years old, but at that time I learned a very valuable lesson how to manage my finances from a very young age. Unfortunately, my father fell ill when I was 15 years old. I was unaware of the gravity of the situation, but it seemed he understood it all too well as he took the time to have a heart-to-heart -heart conversation with me. He told me, Lies, in life you will encounter many advisors, the one you should never listen to is fear. It will pop up at unexpected moments, perhaps when you are standing in front of a crowd. Learn to embrace the fear, welcome it even as an old friend, but then let it go. After he shared this with me, a mere five days later, my father passed away. Fast forward, 18 years, and I work in investing, where I do not fear numbers and disregard any biases that women cannot be in control of their financial situation. It is, however, not strange that women feel barriers when it comes to their finances. Up until the late 1950s, women were obligated to quit their job when they would marry. Also, in that time and age, women needed their husband's permission to open a bank account. These are societal codes that we have agreed upon in the past, limiting women's choices. Another one of those weird societal codes. Did you know that 50 years ago, women were not allowed to work at the London Stock Exchange? Why? Well, we're tra uh, traders were required to wear a top hat. And obviously, women would look ridiculous with a top hat, right? So for a long time, women have been excluded from the world of investing. And then, there we have it again, there is fear. Maybe you also recognize the misconception that women are supposedly not good with numbers. These fears limit women to educate themselves and take control of their financial future. They might even feel relieved when their significant other offers to take on the finances. Red flag, ladies, red flag. <laughs> Remember that fear is the one advisor you should never listen to? But there are stories out there of women who did take control. Let me tell you the story of Muriel Siebert also known as the first woman in finance. In 1967, she set out on a journey to become the first female trader on the New York Stock Exchange. 
only to be rejected time and time again. She decided to take matters into her own hands and raised $445,000 and bought herself the seat on the exchange. To me, it is truly inspiring how she opened the doors for countless other women to the world of investing. And she did it all without the top hat. Now, back to you, because you also have the opportunity to take matters into your own hands. Three simple steps to get started. First of all, always have your own bank account and your own emergency fund. The women of the 50s fought hard to break this societal code, so let's honor their legacy. From here, find ways to increase incoming and decrease outgoing money flows. How to increase income? Ask for a raise, get a promotion, or take on a side business. And on the spending side, create a realistic budget. Skip those cappuccinos once in a while. And start resisting temptation, because everybody wants your money. Secondly, educate yourself. Because, and this is a little bit painful to say, no one will do this for you. I was one of the lucky ones, because my father taught me. But many believe that once you start earning money, it somehow automatically brings financial know-how. But it's the opposite, actually. Building wealth starts with a solid grasp of financial basics. So fathers, teach your daughters. They will benefit from it their whole lives. And mothers, be the role model they need, because they are watching. And thirdly, lastly, my field of expertise, start investing. Because investing is a great and effective tool to build wealth on a personal level. Trust me, it's really not that hard or scary. Index investing is one easy way to access the stock market. These are well-spread baskets of stocks and bonds that are managed for you at a decent price. From there, aim for long-term commitment, meaning don't pull out when markets get rough, and they will get rough. And start as soon as possible. As you may or may not have noticed, I am pregnant. 28 weeks uh, right now. <laughs> oh, thank you. I'm um, sort of trying to pull off the Rihanna look here uh, on stage a little bit. But more importantly, and uh, speaking of starting early, I will have an investment account ready for this little one in a couple of months, just like my father had for me. And from here, after these three steps, believe it or not, things become even more interesting. Because investing will not only bring you prosperity, it's also a powerful force of change on a global level. Because what would happen if more money flows into the hands of women? One word, magic. Research has shown that especially young women tend to choose investments based on their individual values, invest or values that support innovation and technology, that create uh, gender equality, and that have a positive climate impact. Collectively, and with our own money, we have the power to make an impact in and on the world. A research conducted by BNY Mellon Investment Management shows that if women would start investing at the same rate as men, $1.87 trillion would flow into impact investments. And behind me, you can see what that number looks like. The impact will be huge. In a capitalist world, money 
is a driving force behind change. We have the opportunity to be part of this change. So let's do this. Let's break these societal codes by taking control of our financial situation. And from here, I want to leave you with one last quote from my father. The enemy of good is perfection. So you don't have to do it perfectly, you just have to start. Thank you.